Hello YouTube, Pogo here. Welcome to episode 5 of the Bucket Coding Remastered series. In this episode we're going to continue the MOTD plugin and we're going to add a configuration file so that we can make the message customizable and also save the message. In its current state, the MOTD plugin does work. When the player joins, they're sent a message that says welcome to my server in gold. However, there's absolutely no customization. This might be okay for your server, but if you decide that you want to change the message later, you'll have to go into the plugin, modify it, re-export it, upload it, and then reload or restart your server. If you want to distribute the plugin to someone else, then they wouldn't be able to update the message, and that might not be good enough for them because they might want to have the ability to update the message. Any good MOTD plugin has that ability, and you can clearly see why it's important. In this episode, we're going to add that ability to our MOTD plugin so that you can modify the message. Now, we could just add a variable. We could say, you know, you set the message with a command, and then uh, when the player logs in, you can get the message from the variable. The problem with this is that every time the server reloads or restarts, the variable is wiped the value is just stored in the memory and when you reload or restart all the variables lose their values so in that case you'd have to have the administrator set up the command again set the message again in order for it to work and until then uh, it would have to have some sort of default message this obviously makes no sense because every time you restart or reload you'd have to manually input the message that you want and that shouldn't happen what we can do is we can write the message to a file. The file will remain on the hard drive, so it'll be there no matter how many times we reload or restart. And every time someone logs in, we can simply get the information out of the file so that it's there. We can write to it, we can read from it, and it'll survive every time we reload or restart. And that is uh, definitely something that's very important. And that's what we're going to do today. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the template file. Uh, so the idea is that if there is no configuration file already set up, then we'll have a default that has some default values in it. Before we do that, just take a look at plugin.yml for a second. This is YAML markup, and uh, the idea is that it's a bunch of keys and values, something like name and MOTD author and pogo. And the general idea is that if I went into plugin.yml and I said give me the value for name, you would tell me it's MOTD. If I said give you the val give me the value for version, you would say 1.0. So now we're going to make the uh, template for the configuration file and you'll notice that it'll look very similar to plugin.yml. It's a bunch of different keys and values, a bunch of different names and values that are stored in this uh, format. So we want to right click on the SRC folder, and it is very important where you put the file, and we're going to create a new file called config.yml. Config.yml is the name for the default configuration file, and we need to make sure that we use that. Eventually you can have more than one configuration file, but that will be uh, a little ways down the road. When you name it config.yml, Bucket will automatically look for it and save it and load it and everything, so it's important that you get the name right. Inside of config.yml, we'll go ahead and set it up. At this point, there's only really one thing that we need to store, and that's the MOTD message. So we'll call it message. We put a colon, and then we put whatever we want to, uh, whatever we want the message to be. So we'll say, uh, welcome to my server. And we probably want uh, to have text color. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that, just like you do in the game. We'll go ahead and write and be like that. And you'll know that a lot of servers that you go on, you can write messages like that. You can write and and a color code. So I think that's like A through F or 0 through 9. And you can get all sorts of different colors. So of course, we'll have to make that work in our code. But the idea is that you'll have the ability to customize the color, which is obviously something that you want to be able to do. So there we go, welcome to my server just like that. We have config.yml set up. Now let's go over to the MOTD class, our uh, Java plugin class. There are a couple of things that we have to do 
before we can actually use the configuration file. If the user uh, installs the plugin and they're running it for the first time, or if they delete the configuration file because they want a new one, we need to generate a configuration file based on the template. And luckily, it's really easy to do this. You'll notice if you look inside of all of the uh, methods that you can get from inheriting Java plugin, there's one of them called get config. It returns a type file configuration, and that is a reference to the configuration file. We'll go ahead and click on that, and we want to go ahead and select options, which is a method, and then we want to say copy defaults and put true as the parameter. What this will do is if there's no configuration file already, it will copy the config.yml template to the correct folder. If there is already a file there, then it will not do anything. So if you already modify the value, it will not be overwritten every time. That's obviously important. And another method that we get from Java plugin is save config. It is very important that you call save config whenever you modify the configuration file because countless times I have written a plugin and uh, some value is not being saved or some error is occurring and I realized that I forgot to save the value to the configuration file. So always make sure that you save the configuration file whenever you do any sort of modification to it. Very important. You'll notice that this goes inside of on enable because we want the configuration file to be generated if needed as soon as the plugin starts up. Because now inside of on player join we can read the message from the configuration file. So to go ahead and do that, we, we will do that. You're going to write get config dot get string message. And let's take a look at, at exactly how that works. If you write get config dot get, you'll notice that there are all kinds of different get related methods in here. There's just get by itself, which returns an object. We have get boolean, we have get color, get double, get int, uh, get item stack even, get list, long, string is an important one in there, uh, even a vector. And the idea is that you're going into the configuration file and you're pulling out uh, different pieces of information. And all of these inf pieces of information can have a type. So you can store numbers in the configuration file. You can store locations on in the configuration file. You can store pretty much whatever you want. Now, if you look in config.yml, this is obviously just a string. And if you look in here, these are actually all strings. Version is even a string, because you could write 1.0.1. Um, but you can store numbers, or you could store locations, or lists, or items, or anything that you want. And the idea is that when you go to get it out of the uh, configuration file, you can specify the type. So instead of just getting out an object and then you have to check if the object is the right type and then you have to cast it, that's not very good. You can actually specify the, the type that you want. So if I was trying to get a, uh, a number, you could do get int. The argument is the path to the parameter and the path in this case is just message because it's at the very top. You can have nested uh, configuration blocks, and that's something a little bit more advanced, but the idea is um, you could write, you could have a markup that says, you know, players, and then the name, you know, post like 29, and then you can say, you know, health is 20, and food is 20. And if I wanted to know the health of me in the file, the path would be players.pogostick29.health, because it's all nested inside of here. That's more advanced, and it doesn't really apply to an MOTD plugin, so we'll worry about that a little bit later. One other thing, you'll notice that getString and all of the get methods have an option for a second parameter. The second parameter is the default value, so just in case uh, there's no value, if the value is deleted from the configuration file, or there's some sort of error with the file, maybe someone misplaced a quotation mark, or whatever it is, you can specify a default value instead of getting null out of it. So to do that, simply specify. We'll write in chat color dot red, and we'll say MOTD config file uh, uh, error. So now, 
it will actually tell the user that there's an error with the MOTD config file. And you could obviously, you know, change that to a different message, but it'll serve our purpose as well so we can make sure that it's working and then it gives us a message if it isn't working. Okay, now we are ready to test. We have saving the default file if we need to. Then we have loading the information and we even have a default message just in case it doesn't load the information correctly. There's one other issue that we're going to see when we go and run it, uh, but we'll get to that in just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and export MOTD. And there we go. I'm gonna open up terminal and start the server. And I'm gonna open up Minecraft and connect. The plugin should start up without any errors. And it's important to note that the plugin, so you'll see the plugin just started up, and it did on enable, so it got to this code. It copied the file if it needed to and, and saved it. So let's just see what that actually looks like. Uh, if we go to our server and we go to plugins, you'll see that there's an MOTD folder. Uh, whenever you have a configuration file, a folder with the name of the plugin is created. And if we click in there, there's config.yml. And if we open it up, uh, slight, slight issue there as you can see, but we'll get to that in one second. Uh, you can see here that the message is there. So it copied over the default value. Now, the reason why um, that is doing that is because we do need to put single quotes around the message. So now we want to generate a new configuration file because we fixed the template. So we simply delete the old one and now I'm going to export, and you need to reload so that that on enable gets called again. And here's a new config file. And if you look at it, now it looks right. It copied over the default message, which is NB, welcome to my server. One important thing to note if you're using a Mac is you need to go into preferences and turn off smart quotes and smart dashes. It's very important because what it will do is if you go to type in a single quote, it will turn it into a fancy looking uh, quote, which will completely mess everything up. The config file won't load and you'll be very confused as to why. So make sure you turn those off if you're using terminal uh, on a Mac. And at this point we should be ready to test it. We saw that the config file generated correctly, so we shouldn't have any issues at all. I'll go ahead and join and we'll see what happens. We got an MOTD config file error. Now I found that, that this happens, I'm not completely sure why, when I go and open up the file, and I think that if I go and reload that, that it works. And this shouldn't be an issue in your regular production, but I think that when it goes to um, set the config, go ahead and add this line, reload config. That might fix the issue. Um, after we save it, we want to load it in again. I think that might be the issue that we're having there. And now you shouldn't see that error again, unless the file actually is bad. You can see now that uh, it says NB, welcome to my server. That's almost perfect, but uh, while well, it's not in color, it just says the color. So let's go ahead and fix this. We all know about chat color. That's the enumerator where we can find, um, actually, is it an enumerator? It is. Sorry about that. <laughs> so chat color, uh, it's the enumerator where you can find all of the different colors that we want to use. And you'll notice some methods, and this important one called translate alternate color codes. It is two parameters, the color code character and the text to translate. That's two instances of alliteration right there. The color code, which is, or the color character, which is, of course, a character, is the character that you're using to represent a color. And in this case, it's an ampersand for us. The idea is that when you write ampersand followed by a color code, like in this case, sorry, like in this case, ampersand B, we're saying that we want that to translate to the color B, which is a very nice looking blue. The text to translate is obviously whatever's in the configuration file. So we have to take this right here, the value that we get from the configuration file, and we have to stick it through the color code translator, and then we can finally send it as a message. 
So if we go ahead and export this again, we should now see that we are in color. So I'm going to disconnect and reconnect. And you'll see that it now says, welcome to my server in that very, very nice blue color right there. And, uh, excuse me. And that's exactly what we want. Now, instead of displaying the color code, it actually uses the color code. So we can see now that uh, the configuration file was loaded in and the value was taken out, but that is the default value, not terribly impressive. So uh, let's take it up a notch. I'm going to go into the config file and I'm going to go ahead and change the message. So let's put it in color E, which I think is a red, uh, and we'll make the message say, um, have fun on the server. So now we have a different color and a different message. So it's now time to see if the configuration file actually works. We of course need to reload in order to get the new data from the configuration file. And you'll see that it says have fun on the server and I guess E is actually the yellow color so I was wrong about it being red. But you can clearly see that it does say have fun on the server and it does say it in the different color. So we can see that this works, and one very important thing, if you can't already tell, is I'm gonna reload this five times. If I just reloaded it a bunch, and now I'm going to disconnect and reconnect, and you'll see that it still says have fun on this server in yellow. And that's very important because that demonstrates to us, um, that demonstrates to us that the value is being stored in between reloads. And that's very important. So now instead of having to manually, you know, assign a variable every single time you start the server, it will read in from the file, and the file will remain on the hard drive uh, basically until it's deleted. And if it's deleted, then a default configuration file will be automatically generated. And so this whole system works very well. Now, of course, this plugin is missing some critical features. For example, you can't change the configuration message in game. And you also can't reload the configuration file while the server is running. So if you modify the value in there, you'd have to reload or restart the server in order for it to come into effect. We want to fix both of these things, and we're going to do that in the next episode, because we need to look at command arguments before we can do any of that. So just to recap this episode, we set up a basic configuration file with one piece of data, we got it to automatically generate the default file, and then we got it to read in uh, all of the data, whether it's the default file or something already specified. Uh, from there, we were able to read in the message, translate the color codes correctly uh, so that it would appear in color, and then finally display the message. So now uh, the MOTD plugin is far more useful than it was before the before this video and before all the code that we wrote. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I will see you guys soon with some more coding videos. Bye for now.